We now left the breeding plant. My friend over here, Joseph, is going to tell us where we are. First of all, he's going to introduce himself and tell us what the hell happens here. My name is Joseph Luswavi. I'm the special project manager at Marula Protein. And uh, welcome to our processing plant. We are now here actually in KCCA Bugolobi Wankoko. So this is called the KCCA Waste Recycling Plant. This is the chicken of the protein. So this is where we are cooking and boiling things from. We trained a, a number of staff, put them into the markets. Okay. So from the markets, they now we get organic waste. That waste is now going to be processed and okay. after processing, we are going to feed it to the lab. Okay. The first reason as to why protein is actually doing whatever we are doing, the major problem is actually the organic waste management. Okay. As you know, that Kampala produces more than 3,800 tons of waste every single day. Wow. Remember, these are nutrients that are actually going out and bringing a havoc to yes. the community. The black soldier fly are actually the tool that can consume this organic waste as fast as possible. Okay. Seven days, you're done. They've eaten and the waste and then you're getting the feed and the fertilizer. We actually discovered that fish meal is one of the reliable protein sources. Okay. However, due to the increasing population, humans need to eat fish. Animals need to eat fish. Yes. The lands, the lakes are not expanding. Yes. So we need to create an alternative to, so that we can supply the population with enough feed. Okay. So that is why we are bringing in the protein from the larvae to act as a substitute for fish. Okay. This has been actually experimented on animals okay. and it's very, very good. It's perfect. Three, okay. you're looking at fertilizer. Fertilizers were coming from the outside, but then protein actually discovered we would bring some technology so that we can produce our own fertilizer. Yes. Guess where the fertilizers come from? Okay. You're going to get the organic plants, feed them to the larvae. These are going to break the nutrients from the proteins to the nitrogen, you know, potassium and chloride that the, actually the plants need. Okay, so, so this larvae break down all the waste into <laughs> all these nutrients. Thank you. Perfect. Also the employment yeah. opportunity because this is a circular industry, new, that yes. is integrating and supporting other existing. So Thank how many you. people are employed over here? 43. 43 people, wow. Yes, 43 years. On a daily basis, yes. we get baby larvae from that side. So the other side, we saw that the baby larvae were ready to be brought over here. Yes. Now, they have been brought over here. Uh -huh. Please, take us through. What, what happens after that? The tricycle will deliver the baby larvae here. Right. So we use uh, this sieving machine okay. to basically separate the larvae and grade them. Okay. So we have the fine grade, we have the best grade that we actually encourage and also put out to the farmers. So it's these grades that will actually now be introduced to the west. Okay. So depending from our findings, we have a, a regulated uh, quantity okay. that we can apply per quantity of waste. So we've regulated that. Okay. So depending on someone's preference, we tell them that, okay, how many are you taking? Because uh, we now sell a kilogram of baby larvae at actually 20,000. Okay. A kilogram of baby larvae will give you about uh, 25 kilograms of larvae minimum. Okay. Within a period of seven to 10 days. Okay. This does the saving. So it takes away what was the feed. Yes. The, the starter. Over here, they called it the starter feed. The starter feed. So we'll have our starter feed. I can see a bar here. Yes. This is where our starter feed goes. Yes. And then um, where do the larvae go? So the second grade will come here. Okay. Ah. And then the first big, biggest grade will go there. So second grade means smaller. Yes smaller they need some more refining okay so that they can get ready for actually feasting on the west so what happens to this which you've saved out protein is actually what we have is a zero waste process yes there is nothing that we throw away okay so this has been eaten by the larvae so this will now go back into the fertilizer ah so this is fertilizer now it becomes fertilizer. can i get this and just take to my garden no uh, need for adding anything or anything you don't need to add anything however we recommend yeah because if it is just directly from here at times it is going to make some heat build up you okay so once it builds up the heat and then you put it directly to the plants it could scorch okay so we encourage to give it just some time or to put it away from the plant about a feet yeah put it put it away from the plant or if i can just pour it somewhere let it lose uh -huh. the heat thank you then i take it to the garden that would actually make perfect my, my so we've got our fertilizer over here, yes. which I'm going to take to my garden. Yes. And then we've got the larvae. However, what next? This mm -hmm. is actually not the real fertilizer because this is just the starter feed. This is starter feed. Yes. This is actually the area where they're going to bring the organic waste. Okay. So what you see is actually waste. So imagine how much NPK farmer put in to actually get the tomatoes. 
I can imagine a lot of fertilizer. That is what we're actually getting out and taking back to the soils. Okay. We are giving waste a second chance. Once this waste is actually delivered there, we now put it using that conveyor. So this is a processing processing machine, the waste okay. washer. Okay. So they will now take it through and then they put it into the drums okay. immediately. Okay. Now from the drums, we are going to focus on actually letting them ferment. Okay. Now, what is the model that we are trying to do? We are trying to actually inspire farmers okay. to probably even learn how best they can do it. Because yes. initially, you actually, we were producing three tons of lavi every day. Wow. Every day. However, we would get now farmers and then they are Three like, tons of lavi every day. Every day. Yes. So someone comes and then tells you, I need 150 tons of fertilizer. How much do you have? Mm -hmm. Someone comes and tells you, okay, can I get uh, five tons of feed? On a monthly basis, we would uh, produce about four to five tons dry. Yes. So that is our capacity of production. So you would discover that this couldn't actually enable us to perform. Yes. It. So the overwhelming demand actually made us rethink our model. Yes. So here we've simplified it even further. Beautiful. That a farmer, you just need to get five, seven days, rare, get out. Get seven done. days, rare, get done. The farmer has saved the the complication of breeding yes. and everything. You yes. just get the larvae, raise them, feed your chickens, fish, whatever, and you're done. Yes. Come back, pick more. Yes. Perfect. And now to those farmers who actually don't have access to waste. Yes. We've told them that we are, can actually help you to provide you with waste from here. Which is Doesn't expensive. that make it more expensive? Because I can imagine you're putting in a lot of... There's loads of costs. There's people you're employing. There's loads of waste down here. Um, the machinery, you're using electricity. Would it make it expensive for me, a farmer? Because the reason I can imagine I would want to come to Black Soldier Fly Lavi is because a lot of the other alternatives are expensive. Yes. Fish meal, for example, it's expensive. Yes. Soya, it's expensive. Yes. So I'm thinking, um, isn't it expensive? No, it is, uh, to some extent, we provide it as an alternative. Okay. So for someone who really lacks access, because we are trying to make their life as easy as possible and to bring them into the industry. However, we encourage, if you have waste in your location, well Perfect. and good. Okay. You don't need to come and buy waste from here because this is the same waste. What is the cost of a kilogram of the dry larvae? So, we were selling now the kilogram at uh, 4,000 okay. initially. However, we discovered with this business, it has the economies of scale. Yes. The more you produce, the lower your costs okay. can actually go. Okay. So a farmer, we as well encourage, and just in any other business, if you're doing broilers, you actually need to rear like 1,000. So right, that you it can, makes sense, yes. Because yes. each broiler would probably be 1K yes. profit, yes. All right, so, so, so right now you no longer sell the, the dry larvae? Yes. Okay. So we no longer sell, but we've empowered farmers and we've linked them up. So whoever needs the dry larvae, at least farmers are now producing and they are ready to actually support. So what we are doing here is okay. we are introducing organic waste into the crates to ah, weigh up for the pupa. So this is our organic waste that originally was stored yes. in the drums. For how long do we store it? We give it a period of about uh, four days to one week. Four days to one week. Yes. The drums have to be closed up properly. Properly. So that there's no oxygen getting in. Thank you. Okay. Yes. All right. So what you're seeing here is yes. that we are trying to introduce the baby larvae yes. into the crates. But these crates, later we don't harvest. Okay. They are going to grow and then we get them, further them into pupa production okay. that we can supply to the baby. Okay. Seed. Okay. Yes. I understand. So what you see is a mixer. In the mixer, we add the waste and then uh, we try to mix it so that we can have a consistency. Okay. Then after we get it out and then introduce it into the crates. Okay. At least from the experience that we have and we normally train to our operators is that there is a, a good quantity that we need per crate. Yeah. So about 10, 12.5 kilograms per crate goes in and then we bring the baby larvae at a regulated density, we input them as we recommend also to the farmers. Okay. Yes, Great. so we don't just pour any amount. Yes. So we know that each crate would probably produce 1.5 or 2 kilograms of larvae. So if a farmer like me, who keeps my animals, wants to get this baby larvae, where do I get them from? So all you need to do is, do you have our number? Yes. Call us. Guys, I'm in Ginger, I need uh, maybe 20 kilograms. We normally provide an offer to people who are close to Kampala that if you take above 30 kilograms, there is no transport okay. fee. So that we shall provide. So if you're in Jinja and then you're taking maybe in bulk, depending on the capacity, we can organize that on the on the uh, public transport and then it is delivered. If let's say 
Now, in, we've tried to expand to other locations, like in Jinja, we have yes. a hub there, in yes. Kangurumira. Yes. So you can actually get supply from that side, to so, make it easy. Help me understand. The farmer who is going to raise this larvae, because I can imagine I'm a farmer. Yes. Um, someone watching farm up, you know, they, are, they have their animals, whatever they're keeping, maybe fish or chickens. They have their chickens and they want, they have gotten their larvae from you. Yes. What's the entire process they need to go through to raise this larvae? Because what we, we understood is that it's quite complicated to breed them. And most probably they're not going to opt to breed them. Yes. But now they have opted to get the larvae. Yeah, yes. there may be larvae from you, five day old. What's the process? What's the entire process? Can you take us through that process right here? Yes. Yes. So basically, a farmer, by the time they get the baby larvae, we've taken them through the processes that can actually train them on how best they're going to do. They're going to do a couple of uh, things, about four things. Okay. What do they need? They need actually the containers where they are going to rear. Okay. They need... Can they use any kind of containers? Yes, any kind of containers. We are going to see, we've tried to stipulate them in a, a simple demo there. Okay. That is a benzene, a jerry can that has been cut. Yes. It becomes a container. Yes. Perfect. So, they need waste that has been fermented or if they can Must have... the waste have been fermented? It is better if you have fermented waste because the nutrients that are going to be available for the larvae are going to be high so, and it won't bring house flies. How about uh, someone who has um, chickens, pigs? They don't need to ferment. They don't need to ferment. They don't need to ferment. And uh, can I use my uh, goat waste? Now, goat waste? Or cattle waste? Now, that... Uh, depending on what has been available is we've run some trials to see but someone had succeeded while they added some ingredients of molasses and then fermented it and then they got something good however initially it had been something problematic okay depending on the nutrition of those animals yes yes so, so that we've not yet come out very well to confidently say it will work a hundred percent okay but we are confident about the chicken fish uh, pigs at least that dung is very good. And then also the vegetable. Does fish have dung? Uh, fish wastes. Yeah, fish wastes. Like offals. Okay, offals. Yes. Uh, okay, I understand. So that will like the intestines and uh -huh. things like that. Okay. Yes. So you need a container okay. and then you have your waste. So what you basically need to do, just like now, this waste. Okay. So get baby larvae from us. Okay. Introduce your waste into the crate or the platform that you're going to use. Yes. Put the baby larvae. Put in your stores. Wait for seven days. Check on them probably even before the seven days come. Okay. After seven days, harvest. In case they want to feed live, they can pour. Okay. In case they want to process, then they are going to probably just get a, a hot pan and then they can try to, they wash them, the larvae, or try to even roast them, to roast them, that is when they are drying, or sun dry. Okay. So there are a couple of alternatives. That's perfect. Yes. So what I'll do, yes. because I believe a lot of our farmer viewers can you know, benefit from this measure. If someone is, for example, in, um, I don't know, in Rwanda, uh, ca uh, how can they best get this? Would they have to travel over here? I'm glad to inform you that we've also expanded probably to Rwanda. Probably, or you've, you've expanded? We've expanded. Ah, Rwanda. perfect. So <laughs> what I'm going to do, guys, is that I'm going to put the contact for the company in the description because this is helpful to people as farmers, yeah? It has nothing to do with bias. Farmers outside there, you guys saw that I, Dr. Daniel, wanted to do Black Soldier 5 farming, but I, I failed, honestly, I failed. But when you get experts like this, it's good to take advantage of them. So I'm going to leave their contact in the description box below. You want to learn as much as possible, come on. Just get that contact, contact them, and they'll be able to help you. This entire warehouse that you see here okay. is basically to sustain the normal greenhouse. The greenhouse that we saw the other side. Yes. That's the purpose over here. So this is all breeding stock. But this is ideally what the farmer would also be going through yes. on their farm. You can, imagine. can imagine. I'm telling you. Yes. Because our costs become very high yes. when we try to involve in the trying to get the parents stock, trying to, you know, do supply things. Supply the farmer. Yes, supply the farmer. So it becomes... So what you showed us on the outside, you said you, you, you put the tiny larvae. Yes. And then you come and just place them around here. So, Dr. Daniel. Yes. Uh, do you, are you afraid of larvae? No, 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 I'm not. Imagine how big they are. They are really big. How old are they? So this was introduced on the 29th. They are really big. Wow. So these are six days. Wow. Six days. Using organic, simply organic, uh, organic, organic waste. waste. Yes. And guess what? Mm. So a farmer, mm -hmm. from the introducing the organic waste into yes. the crate, yes. they are going to bring the baby larvae, yes. place them, as you've seen. Yes. 
and then place them, stack them because these are batches of crates. Yes. Because we deal in a, a couple of um, big numbers. Yes. Wait for seven days. Yes. Harvest. Yes. When you harvest, this is the protein. Okay. Now, when you begin processing this, you're going to get the protein from the larvae, which is going to be 43%. We've okay. tested this. 43%. 43% Is it consistently protein. so 43%? It varies okay. from the farmer depending on what you use. Okay. However, it ranges. So some would so, probably so, say. So if you're using organic waste, you expect about 43%? Roughly, yes. Okay. 40 to 43, but okay. it can also go higher. Okay. Depending on how protein rich is actually the substance that you use. Yes. And then they have uh, the fat varies from 23%. Okay. Crude fat, yes. a lot of oil. Yes. This initially was actually doing our harvesting because we were looking at milk for numbers. Harvesting the larvae. The, the larvae. Yes. Okay. From the crates and then we were harvesting a couple of them. So from point of the larvae hatching from yes. the egg yes. to becoming a pupa, how long does it take? It will take about 30 days. Yes. However, it can go to 44 days. Okay. Yes. You get? Yes. So it will take a period of about five days to hatch from the eggs to the baby larvae. Yes. Then it'll take about seven days. Those are 12 days. Yes. Then we look at two weeks from there so that we can get the pupa. Ah, perfect. Yes. So now this area contains the pupa. Yes. Uh, now, what you see here actually. Yes. These were initial larvae that you saw that were yes. white. But now they have tra transformed their color and they are still moving. So they are pupating. They are pupating. So this moment. is what we call now the pre-pupa. Okay. The pre-pupa will reach at a time and then it ceases to move. Okay. So over here now, this is the pupa. Yes. Okay. A farmer would ask us, why do you think it is very key for us to focus in breeding? Okay. When you're breeding, Dr. Daniel, you would focus on the best genetics. Yes. Do you agree? 100%. The same principle is all over the animal sector. Okay. You would want to focus on the best genetics so that you can actually get the best yes. eggs best quality of the larvae that will grow really within a short period of time okay that is what we focus on okay we focus on getting the best flies from the best parent stock okay and that makes us free from perfect. the rest of the other people perfect which kind of animals would be best suited to feed these larvae i have now uh four major animals okay. i want to talk about okay the first is the fish okay fish what do they use to feed fish if you have an insect usually they use fish again <laughs> fish to feed fish. fish yeah so this is actually a perfect substrate that can actually replace the fish okay meal in the fish rations pigs okay we all understand that actually pigs need the right quantities yes. however what becomes difficult is when a farmer doesn't have the right information on how best they can feed them yes but we provide and enrich your knowledge about feeding the pigs on the bsf they will actually do very well. Okay. Another animal is actually the chicken. Yes. Or the poultry. All yes. poultry. Yes. BSF stands yeah. out because it has those fatty acids which are essential. The fatty acids play a really crucial role and it has a really good protein profile. Yes. If you look at the amino acids that are contained, so that makes it very superior. And where we are going, it is going to become actually a trend. Perfect. Number four, we would say for making concentrates for these other animals. Okay. Because we don't normally encourage so much protein in the ruminants. Yes. But at least we encourage to balance a little bit. Perfect. They, they need more from the other sides. So, Dr. Daniel. Yes. You saw a crate, we reared for seven days. Yes. So what we are trying to actually stimulate here as well to uh, replicate is that a farmer after seven days you're going to have fertilizer yes so when a farmer tries to take on to this technology you know not only solving the problem of animals okay because what controls the animals can you lower the costs of feeding you can only exactly. lower the costs of feeding if you grow your own corn yes corn in chicken production all over yes which actually is the biggest ingredient. yes yes true so most farmers would want to grow corn most farmers would want to grow some crops yes so after seven days you are harvesting the fertilizer is going to be another product that you're going to get out. Okay. Currently, we sell this product at 780 shillings a per kilo. kg, a bag at 45,000, and that is 50 kilograms. Okay. We've tried this on coffee. Okay. With yoga coffee. Yes. I'll try to probably show you some results. Yeah. Where it outcompeted all the rest of the fertilizers on the market. All other fertilizers. All the other this fertilizers. This is better. This is far better because it's organic. Yes. You're not only feeding the soils but you're feeding the plant. Yes. Now, to make even more, more interesting, from protein, we add a beneficial fungus called trichoderma. 
okay. obtained from the organic soils yes. in Uganda. Yes. So this is basically to fight the fungus that yes. could be in the soils. Yes. So it becomes actually more superior. Beautiful. One year. Nothing one, is wasted. Nothing is wasted. Now the flies that you saw that die after 14 days, yes. we bring them back okay. into this. Okay. Also the casings, we bring them back into this. My name is Joseph Aridan, head of the extension. As you can see, with our outgrower section, we have something that is portable and cost effective for a farmer out there to be able to start DSF rearing to make their own feed. As you can see, these are wood tree offcuts, locally known as makoko. Then we can use also the poles, that is the eucalyptus poles. Then here we have different types of waste that I always do ferment and also carry out experiments on, basing on what farmers have. As you can see, this is a drum of water heighting. This one is chicken waste and we have pig dung. I have brewery waste and I use these drums that are airtight. Once I put the waste inside, it can fully ferment. So ideally, a farmer anywhere can just have this simple setup like this. Exactly. It doesn't need to be expensive. You see when you were at the hatchery, is it called the hatchery? The yes, breeder unit, the other side. Everything yes. was fancy. Sure. You, you know, there was machines, everything controlled, yeah. automatic. Exactly. But you mean a farmer with something like this can just go on? Exactly. Ah, perfect. So this one is more cost effective. Okay. Not compared to the other and that scares the farmers out there. Yeah. So that's why we have something so simple for a farmer to utilize. As you can see, we have a tarpaulin instead of using iron sheets that could be expensive. Yes. So here we are inside and I have different rearing systems that I always train farmers and advocate for farmers to use okay. basically on the different containers and the space that they have. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we have these drums. Yes. You can have them like this and you slant them at okay. some angle. Then you are able to put in the feed and rear the larvae inside. We also have cut drums okay. where a farmer can also have these drums, like maybe this. they are waste, mm. they have holes and they are just dormant at home. What's the purpose of having holes? Um, like it's if just it broken, damaged, yeah, if it's yeah, damaged. So bringing back waste in two years, yeah, yes. since you're already using the organic yeah. waste, yes. you can still use this other waste. Okay. This is now going horizontal on the floor, just three courses and you have a bin. So we call them beans, open beans, then you can put in the waste and you can rear the larvae inside. We have these bowels for rearing the larvae. Once we get the feed that is fermented, a farmer can use this one. This one accommodates roughly four kilograms to five kilograms. And after seven days, plus or negative, a farmer is able to harvest 1.1 or 1.2 kilograms from each of these. Wow. So we have this as some people do it on commercial yes. for business. Okay. They use this. Then locally also, a farmer can also use our empty jerrycans. You get a jerrycan that maybe is leaking. Yes. Instead of throwing it out there, get it, divide it, open. Have something like this. Then you can also inoculate your larvae inside it and rear them in this kind of jerrycans. So with me, these are the shelves. I call it the vertical way of rearing the larvae. So the other was the horizontal. This is vertical. This is vertical. It utilizes the space better. Exactly. Yes. So I can recommend any okay. of the two basing on what the farmer wishes to have. Okay. I also have experiments that I carry out. Okay. Basically for farmers who have different types of waste, okay. organic waste. Some have like the chicken droppings. Those are maybe those ones who have battery cage. Then we have those ones of uh, pig dung, yes, cow dung. So just to be clear, yes. if I'm keeping my chickens in uh, deep litter, I can't use this. You can. How? With deep litter, I've tested it. That's why I told you this is the outgrower and I carry out experiments. Just okay. as you can see, I have some experiments that I'm doing here. Yes. This was chicken dropping and goat dropping. Okay. Then some bit of market waste Okay. that I'm trying to test. So I inoculated it yesterday. I put in some 20 grams of the baby larvae okay. and I can give recommendations after the experiment. So once I meet a farmer and he tells me I have my god dropping, I can tell them, add on this, try this, add this. Okay. So I give something basic on what I've done, not okay. on what I've had. Okay. Yeah, that's beautiful. The, that's the beauty. So you've found out that 
chicken waste from deep litter can actually give results? It can give results. Okay. So you just mix in some chicken waste from the deep litter, but you have to add in water. Remember, in most cases, yes. it is dry. Yes. Then you can add in some market waste. Yes. And you can have something better within the seven or eight <coughs> days, plus or negative. Beautiful. Yeah. This looks like you know something my grandmother could also do sure yeah 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 not like everything else that i had seen yeah. everything else was was a bit scary mm -hmm. but but now that i've seen this yeah. i'm encouraged exactly yes so <laughs> once you take people to see the big machines they're like oh my god yeah it's so crazy they feel like the cost but locally you can have it at the simplest level possible beautiful to show you how basically a farmer out there can do it like in terms of harvesting so here before me i have a crate of the larvae that are mature and these are seven days so today they are making the eighth day so they are already ready for harvesting and this is what now we recommend our farmers to harvest and feed we have different ways of harvesting where somebody can use it manually by just scraping off the frost from top as you scoop it off gently, because by nature the larvae are scared of the light, they will keep on going down. Okay. So you get the frass. This is now almost ready for manure now. Okay. You scrape off until you reach the bottom. So as you scrape off, the larvae will be going down. They keep burrowing. Exactly. Yes. So they will burrow down, as you can see. Then you separate it. So this is like the manual way of doing it. So you keep doing that as they continue as they go doing, lower. As they go lower. Till you're left with as little of this as possible. Exactly. Okay. So you'll even find them gathering at one point, yes. maybe at the corners, just as you can see when I open the corners, yes. that's where I have the biggest quantity. Okay. Then we can also use our mesh. Okay. I get the larvae and spread it on top with the frost. The frost will remain on top and the larvae will be passing through the net. And go down. And go down. So this is what happens, as you can see. So, but this is determined by the type of frost okay. or the type of waste that you have given to your larvae. Okay. Once you use like chicken droppings, yes. you might not be able to use this mesh. Why? Because of the frost, the nature, mm. they won't be in particles that are big enough to be on top okay but rather they will all pass through so the best method ah, is always using the the manual scraping. method yeah the manual method of scraping off as they keep on or you can do sieving yes sometimes when after drying because of the big portion yes you sometimes crush them using the hammering machine to have the powder or more finer particles of the frost that we can use as a fertilizer at the end. They have already passed through and that's how we do have it. So after sweeping, you yeah. always have now this remaining portion with the small particles of the frost. Okay. And we can use a basket like this okay. to sieve and get the larvae. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see, just do it a bit faster because they will burrow. As you can see. Beautiful. As it's bringing another container for putting our larvae. Then you can place them. Then also, if you don't want to be disturbed so much by all this, you can use, if you have poultry birds, especially the local birds, you just pour on the ground. Pour on the ground, they come and sort and it out. Will, so as you can see, once you leave them for more time, you'll find they'll go down and bring the frass on top, or the manure that is already used up, that maybe you might have failed to completely utilize. 
Then after this, at this step, you can also wash them. How do you wash them? You put them in water? You get like this. Yes. Then you get a bowel of container filled up with water. Then you scoop them. Yes. Like this. Let us assume this one has water. Yes. So you dip them, then you just do this. Ah, you rinse okay. them. Yeah, you rinse them. Yeah. Then after rinsing them, you will have another separate container that you will keep on doing them. What are some of the problems or the difficulties I might face trying to raise and use black soldier fly larvae as a farmer? So the most challenge that all these farmers face with is having a soggy environment. That is like when this one has more moisture and it is more like being muddy towards the time of harvesting. But it depends on the waste type. Okay. Like behind us, we have tomatoes. Yes. So tomatoes, we generally know them, they have a lot of water. Yes. Tomatoes, let me say vegetables mainly. Yes. They have a lot of water in them. Yes. So what do we always recommend? Towards that time of harvesting, you can use sawdust. Okay. Sawdust, yeah. remember it will be dry, so it will help too. Absorb, absorb the moisture. the moisture. So after doing that, mix it and let it form. Yeah, it will form like it is forming cakes. But remember, these are mature or adult larvae now, ready for harvesting. So after mixing it and the moisture is reduced, if you have very many, place this one under the sun. Yes. Or in the open. Automatically, they are going to start dropping down. Okay. They will separate themselves and go down. But this one now, you, I always recommend manual method. Yes. Where you will be able to pick them, to pick the thrust off as they continue going or barreling down. Then after, you will be able to have the thrust and, and the larvae separately. Okay. Then the other challenge also is uh, depending on the structure, predators. Yes. Remember, larvae are eaten not only by poultry yes we have the rats okay the rats also like them so much we normally do oiling okay if not oiling at least ash so those ones help to repel them away and you are able to continue with yours production then however also the roof leakages the yes. moisture content also affects yes moisture and temperature affects the larvae growth when the temperatures are too cold the larvae tend to be dormant and when they are dormant, that means it's going to take a longer time for them to break down the food and utilize it for them to grow. So temperature is so crucial. That's why sometimes I recommend some farmers, like in that drum of 150 kilograms mm. of market waste or waste, at least to put in some maize bran, like probably like five kilograms or four to six around there. This one is to stimulate and bring in that aspect of raising the temperature in the waste for the larvae to fully utilize it. So uh, would you recommend to a farmer to yes. use black soldier fly larvae to feed the animals? Exactly, I would recommend because when you look at the cost benefit analysis, the black soldier larvae is mainly not giving all the food. Remember, we should remember and it's a, a caution that I give to my farmers out there. Most of them go thinking that it is the larvae mm -hmm. that they should entirely feed. Larvae is a protein source. Yes. Mainly. Yes. So we are bringing it as a substitute for silverfish, mainly. And this is a source of animal protein. Yes. So we still need the soya, which is a plant protein. Yes. We still need the calcium mm. from the shells. We still need all those others. But mainly we are eliminating the silverfish. Reason being, silverfish is becoming costly and making most of the farmers to drop out. Mm. It is increasing the cost because it is the one taking the biggest percentage because protein is mainly for growth. Yes. And he knows it better. Protein is expensive. I exactly. also know that. So we are seeing that if a farmer now, somebody is buying silverfish at 160 for 40 kgs and this farmer is buying the black soldier fly larvae, the baby larvae, a kilo at, at 20,000, and after seven days is having something like 25 to 30 kilograms of larvae from one kg that means you will need only two kgs which yes. is around 40,000 to raise yes. let us assume is getting the waste we always sell a waste a drum of waste at five thousand that means one kilogram can consume roughly two drums yes so that means you will need four drums yes so we are looking after the seven days a farmer is able to save how much more money a lot more a money. lot of more of the money and it is cutting down the cost 
so I would highly recommend my farmers out there, please run in for the BSF. And we as the company Marura Protein, we are sustainably providing all the larvae at all times. The baby larvae is available in plenty. We have waste for those who could not collect their waste mm. that is fermented and ready for use. So what we, we've actually seen is uh, the practical guide on how to raise the black soldier fly larvae. So this is a copy that Protein has come out with and uh, the essence is whenever probably you come around, it doesn't mean that you're going to get everything on just that instant day. However, we try to document. One of my colleagues, Aridan, has taken you through all the trials on research that they are trying to do on the various wastes that a farmer out there could probably be having and thinking that it may not work out. This is the first edition. At a later date, we shall produce now the second edition, the third edition, just to give you more knowledge about the black soldier fly. So if you're there and then you're interested, this copy will actually be very good for you and it's very affordable. And the company right now, we are selling it at 20,000 and it's very, very, very nice. I urge everyone to probably try it out. I, in my context, actually, I see that the black soldier fly business with the protein model, it really, really works, especially if you're a farmer. To a farmer who has already animals, that is already a credit for you. So you need to try out and then you cut off the cost of production. We have a couple of farmers who have tried out and we've tried to demonstrate the applications that they are trying to do in this book, especially the structures. What we see are the open systems where someone is taking more than 20 kilograms of, of uh, baby larvae every day. This is something massive. So someone is looking at producing for fish and then, you know, there is a lot of cost saving that can be done. So to all farmers, try it out, new technology, and let's embrace it because this is the new goal that we are trying to reach out to you. All right, guys, so that was it. I believe this was a very enlightening tour, Joseph, yeah? Yes. This is not something I honestly expected. I thought I was there hustling alone. While the whole time there's people who have done mechanized stuff and tried to make it really easy for us. So we can see that black soldier fly is actually something practical and something that can be done not only in poultry but a lot of other types of farming like he has shown us so like i've said you know you can get in contact with him and the company uh, you've seen that it can be done very cheaply there's a demonstration unit you can come right here for training and practice sessions and honestly if you haven't liked this video what are you waiting for yeah I won't do any other videos like this if you don't like the video so come on like the video share it with other people you know subscribe to the channel and see you guys very soon with another video lots of love bye